He was a professor during uh, through the period 2007 to 2009 and a distinguished visiting uh, professor from 2003 to 2005 at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, United States, and at IIT Kanpur in India during 1986 to 2007. His research includes remote sensing, natural hazards, and atmospheric pollution. Give me one moment and let me pull up. Uh, Ramesh here. Ramesh, hello. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Uh, okay. Do you see my screen or no? Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Um, uh, it looks excellent. Please take it away. Uh, okay. So thank you very much, Dave. Uh, good morning, good evening, uh, wherever you are. And uh, I'm, I really enjoyed uh, Albert uh, Gee's talk on the flood. Okay. And the flood, uh, like uh, I'm from India, uh, uh, the city known as the Varanasi, which is located the uh, bank of River Ganges. And uh, I have experienced so many floods, uh, okay, and uh, really enjoyed. But uh, yes, um, of course, we have to develop technique to forecast. I remember uh, the day uh, the, when I was learning remote sensing, I, I know that uh, there was a uh, lady who was uh, processing remote sensing data at NASA, and uh, there was a flood in Sabarmati River in the western part of India. And uh, she, she was Indian. She sent a message uh, to the, uh, the administrators uh, of a Gujarat um, uh, region. And uh, then there was a warning. So I know how remote sensing help us um, to get information. So today, what I'm going to talk about, you not know, the flood in, in the plain region, I'm going to talk about the Himalayan region. And uh, since a long time, you know, since um, about 40 years, I'm using optical and microwave satellite data. And I was very much involved in the Indian Space Research Organization. And uh, being in India, I was also using uh, uh, NASA satellite data for the disaster risk in the Himalayan region. You can see Himalaya is so big. And in the foothills of the Himalaya, and, uh, about um, 900 million people, they live. I would like to acknowledge uh, some of the my collaborators, the students, uh, visiting fellows who visited um, us at Chapman, Dr. Jing Fang from China, Chance Chauhan in Taiwan, Anurag Sharma, who is the student, uh, joined the uh, Florida U University, my several past students, and NASA and ISRO, NASA Giovanni team, and NSIDC Boulder, Colorado. Okay. You can see Himalaya is very dynamic. And why it is dynamic? Because Indian plate, Eurasian plates are colliding. As a result, we are getting earthquakes. Earthquakes are very, very common. And earthquakes, we are expecting a big earthquake in India, which is due. Okay. But using remote sensing data, we are trying to uh, do the vulnerability studies, do the uh, all kinds of uh, uh, integrating the information with the GIS platform. Uh, you can see the populations density in the foothills of the uh, Himalayas, 900 million people. Okay, uh, you can see the topography of a uh, Indian plate, um, okay, and uh, the, in the foothills, you have a Basin Valley, okay, and they, there are uh, so many rivers uh, coming from the Himalayan region. Okay, these are the glacier-fed uh, rivers. So, in the natural hazards, uh, the Himalayan region, we get so many kinds of natural hazards: earthquake, landslides, rock slides, floods, cloudbursts. 
and a snow avalanches, forest fires, and I have experienced all kinds of natural hazards in the Himalayan region. Okay, so I uh, live very close, and I also spend my sabbatical from the uh, at the uh, Indian Institute of Technology Monday um, in spring to 2019, and. You can see panoramic view of beautiful Himalayan region, okay? And you can see the topography, and it, this map is a little bit um, topography map um, from a, a east to west, but it should be west to east. You can see that in the western part, the topography is very high. In, this, in the eastern part, it, the topography is lower. What we are getting here from the Landsat, from the other three remote sensing satellite data, uh, you can map this, and uh, what you see, there is the depletion of the glaciers, uh, retreat of the snow glaciers in, in the Himalayan region. Okay, and different uh, section of the Himalaya is showing the, uh, different um, uh, retreat of the glaciers. Uh, mass balance uh, is declining. Okay, you can see here the Landsat data, 72, 89, 2000. You can see the state of the uh, snow glaciers and then the, the melting of the uh, uh, glaciers and then valleys, um, the lakes are formed. Okay, and it, so many people, they are working in the Himalayan region and they found them um, uh, since a long time. They are using the ground observations from the survey map, from the satellite data, and they, they have mapped the, the retreat of the glaciers, uh, uh, glaciers, the Gangotri glaciers in the Himalayan region. What we are doing? We have deployed the GPS uh, measurements for the, uh, for the crustal motion. When I was in India, I was running some uh, GPS. You can see the different uh, section of India moves differently. And this is why I'm saying the Himalaya is a very, very dynamic. And it, you can see this uh, uh, lower side left image, and the, this the Himalayan region and then Indo Gangetic Plain, they are connected. If something goes wrong in the Himalayan region, earthquake occurs, you feel a shock over the, um, if you are living in the, in the foothills region, in the Indo Gangetic Plain. Okay. So now the population has increased. We are afraid that the big earthquake, if it occurs in the Himalayan region, how much damage will create and how many people are going to die. Okay, we are expecting a big earthquake. We have a put in GPS and we are trying to measure that. But it, the, the network of GPS is not very good. So, I myself working uh, in the Himalaya, Himalayan region, modeling remote sensing data since a long time. And you can see the first paper I wrote in 1990 uh, based on the modeling, numerical modeling. And then I try to analyze the Lancet data. And you can see the we map the uh, fault systems, we map the uh, lineaments, okay, to understand the vulnerability, to understand the dynamic nature of the, uh, the Himalayan region. You can see the earthquakes, the distribution of the earthquakes, and we are expecting a big earthquake in future. I use of the optical and the passive microwave remote sensing response to study the earthquakes occurred in the Nepal, okay, Kathmandu. Uh, we did a lot of work, okay, to see the microwave thermal anomaly, okay, associated with the earthquake. And 
And when I was there in India, I collaborated. I got a consultancy project from the defense people. They for the snow avalanche studies and also for the snow characterization. I use the SSMI data. Okay, in the Himalayan region, because the Sase Snow Avalanche Institute in the Himalayan region, they try to map uh, the, uh, the, the about the snow characteristic, and uh, then they try to predict forecast about the snow avalanches. And this is what team, in a project mode, I I studied about the characteristics of the snow cover in the Himalayan region. Okay, but at the same time, I I studied also the changes in the snow characteristics due to several other parameters. And you can see that the frequency of landslides in the Himalayan region is increasing. And you can see, I'm, I'm showing this landslide area, okay, is increasing. And if what we are doing and what I have done, I have studied the whole new tectonics of the Himalayan region using the Landsat data. We map the lineament, then we computed the stress, the changes in the stress. Whenever an earthquake occurs, you can see the right hand side. Okay, the uh, we we map the lineament. We calculated the stress number seven and number six. The, and other three arrow is showing that the area is very vulnerable. Okay, this is what we we, we studied earlier. So what we do based on the lineaments, we try to uh, develop the, the estimation of the stress. Okay, uh, in the Himalayan region, and then we try to try to find out the vulnerable. Uh, Areas you can see the arrows, okay, and the stress arrow the, is giving you information which area is the more vulnerable based on the lineaments mapping. Okay, so this is the this is the way uh, people should do it at the interval of five ten years because the new tectonics is a long uh, process. Okay. So at the same time, if something is uh, happening and that snow avalanches occur, okay, and even whenever there was the earthquake, uh, the snow avalanches has occurred in the past and uh, these days, okay. So the glacier impact on the regional water resources is well known. In the Hindu Kush Himalaya, the glaciers, is is a, not a retreating, but a, there is a mix. A, it is increasing, but a, there are other region fast glacier recession and wasting through most of the region impacts on climate of South and Central Asia. Five hundred million people partly depend on the glacier melt water. There are people living there, and they they. They try to drink those waters. You can see here, uh, people, they use the remote sensing data to study about the hydrological loading. And we have related with the hydrological loading and the increasing of the seismicity in the Himalayan region. And the ba mass balance, we are trying to monitor the mass balance. And it is it is declining since long time at different uh, section of the Himalaya, it uh, retreats differently. Okay, why is this? When I spent a, my sabbatical at the Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, I saw there are a lot, a lot of forest fires. And these forest fires, they are not natural. Some of the, the people living in the Himalayan region, they burn this. Uh, 
Why they burn it? Because they like to have a green vegetation to feed their uh, the cows, buffaloes, all this. And in the Himalayan region, very close to there are industry, there are brick cleans, which is affecting the Himalayan region. You can see the kind of the, the fire occurs in the Himalayan region. Okay. And then other region is the long range transport of dust. Dust which is coming from Arabia Peninsula and also from the Thar Desert in India, okay, affects the snow glaciers in the Himalayan re region. Okay, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show this, okay, and it's since the 2003 I started talking about the dust and its role, okay, and the, so this impact, how it impacts, because when the the snow glaciers are uh, are blanket with the dust, and then the albedo values goes down, and there will be uh, melting is going to be accelerated. Okay, so the, and you can see that when 2019 when I visited Manali, okay, you can see the dust over the uh, over the Himalayan snow, which is darkening. So snow, the dust is also plays a very important role in accelerate, accelerating melting of the snow glacier. So further, what we, uh, we did, we analyzed Modi's data and the daily data, and you can see the albedo values. Okay, we, we map the albedo values, and then we have seen the satellite data here in the EOS DIS same, and it, we we figure it out the albedo value say goes down. Okay, so you you can see this. This has become very very easy to map to use satellite data to find out the change in the albedo values. If the albedo values is going to go down, it will accelerate the melting. Not only that, the snow, uh, the dust also reaches at the peak, Manora Peak, in the Himalaya. Okay, and uh, there is a place in Nanital, and you can see we 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 try to map this. As a result, the water vapor mixing ratio changes. We use the, this uh, Modi's data, and this paper we published in JGR. Okay. So the water vapor mixing ratio change, the relative humidity change, and it, other parameters are also change, air temperature. And, and it, th there are so many cyclones in the east coast of uh, India, in the Bay of Bengal. And I have analyzed the same. Uh, there are three, three, four, five cyclones. And if the intensity is very, very high, the wind speed is very, very high, the atmospheric parameter is changed, not only this, air quality also change, and then it affects the, the snow glaciers are the Himalayan surfaces. We have, we, we have studied all these things, and we have already published a number of papers. So, since a long time, the three, four decades, when I was in the, in India, in Kanpur, I find that I cannot drive my car. I cannot see in the night during winter time, even five meters. Okay. This is the first satellite data, uh, satellite folder data, which was a joint venture with France. Okay. And then we use the Modi's miser data to study what is the, the along the profile, different profile. From the south to north, east to west, what we find is that the maximum pollution level is very high in the Indo Indo Gangli Plain. And this is what you see in the in the polar image. This was a, my first observation. And then 
I said, to, I have to do something in, in the northern part of India to study the pollution. I started collaborating with NASA. I put an aeronaut station in Kanpur, and now we have a 21 years data. Okay, and there are so many publications have come. So what we found? What we found that the dust reaches in the Himalaya region, okay? And the, nowadays we have so many purple air sensors in the Himalayan region. And what I'm trying to say that the, in the Indo country plain, a 900 million people they are living, and there are a lot of anthropogenic activities going on. There is outflow uh, over the Himalayan region. This is what uh, is uh, happening, which is affecting the snow glaciers in the mountain uh, Himalayan region. So the dust is there, and then black carbon. These are the two uh, things which is affecting the snow glacier of the Himalayan region. Not only this, the characterization of the snow, the surface moisture level, everything is changing. So here I want to show you a, a very close to IIT Monday, and only 30 minutes to drive, there was cotropy. Landslides occurred, which killed about 80 people in the night in September uh, 2000, uh, August 2017. And now recently, there was a Chamoli disaster. You might have seen this one. Okay, Chamoli disaster occurred on 7th February 2021. Okay, we use a planet lab data and a, we studied about the dust depositions, about the, the flood, sudden, uh, suddenly uh, enhancement of the flood occurred. Okay, whatever Albert and G, they are talking about, and people, they did not realize with the rock slide, it can trigger so big a uh, flood, and reason is still a mystery for the for the water to flow in the in the river. Several reasons. So more than 150 people were killed, and sudden affected water quality and flood plains along the rivers in downstream. And this uh, we have mapped this, and we have published uh, three four paper. And why is this? Okay, and. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to analyze the, the, the air temperature, the surface temperature, the soil moisture using remote sensing data. With the GRACE data, I'm, I'm trying to see the whatever the mass balance, how the subsurface water is changing, okay? The, with, whether we get a, some clue. You can see in the Chamoli region, the red box. I selected the considered so many boxes and what we found the box number three, there was a sudden increase in the temperature, which increased the moisture level and the characteristic of the permafrost. As a result, this rock slide, the landslides occur. And the good thing is, there are some seismograph stations close to this. And uh, some of my colleagues uh, in, uh, in NGRI collaborating with the German people, and I was told that the, there is a paper coming tomorrow in science. Okay, using this, the 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 seismograph, seismometers, and the characteristic of this, one can forecast about the land size in the Himalayan region. So tomorrow in the science, the paper is coming. The, I'm, I'm not the author of this, but some of the uh, colleagues are uh, author. And you can see the temperature variations, okay, for the January to February uh, 2021, there was the increase in the temperature. So these are the studies that we carried out using the um, satellite data, 
We studied the water quality because all along the river Ganges, there are people, they come, take a bath, and also drink water without any filtration. Okay. So this water quality with the sudden rock slides, landslides, uh, water quality uh, were very bad, very bad, and the floodplain also changed. We use the optical and microwave remotes and the data. So, in summary, what I want to say that in the foothills of the Himalaya, the crop burning, fog haze, dusty storm, forest fire, <laughs> that dynamic is the frequent natural hazards in the Himalayan region is happening earthquakes, landslides, rock slides, forest burning, floods, snow avalanche. And the possible causes, crustal motion of the Himalayan segment, extreme rainfall, sudden increase and drop of temperature, melting of snow glaciers, long range transport of dust and outflow pollutants from indo Gangri plain, clear evidence of the climate change. So in the Himalayan region, we need to have an integrated system, remote sensing, GIS, GPS, LiDAR, airborne drone to monitor dynamic nature of the Himalayan region and forecast changes in the Himalayan region. So thank you very much. Okay, so I, I want to stop sharing this. So you can ask me questions. Okay, Dave. Thank you so much, Ramesh. For, uh, for that interesting presentation. Thank you. Um, if anyone uh, listening does have uh, any questions that they wish uh, to address to Ramesh before we move on to the presentation, I, I don't see any currently in the chat or in the questions. Um, we are just uh, about at our time. Okay. So we have to discuss what we need to do in the Himalayan region. Okay, this is it, because you cannot stop what is going on in the Himalayan region. Okay, and uh, the geo should be considered this. Okay, this is my. Year. So whatever the Albert Gee, they are talking about the flood in the plain region in the Himalayan region. The characteristic of the snow changes, okay, and that is leading to different kind of disaster. Absolutely. Okay, uh, we are at time. Thank you once again, Ramesh, for your time and your presentation you. to our to our uh, open earth observations track here at Phosphor G. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.